It would open me. Paul, where did you get the knife? I take my organs. So this is something called a delusional perception. We perceive something which can be through any of our senses, in this case is seeing the blue cake, but we then add on to that a delusional meaning or a delusional interpretation. Let's go back in time. Let's have a little retro reaction video as we watch actually one of the best medical dramas that's ever been on telly. Let's watch ER. And this one is all about mental illness. Ready? Let's crack on. It's not good medicine for one family member to look after another. So what the hell good is it to have a son for a doctor when he can't write you a prescription? It's not that I can't, Dad. No, no. Just that you won't. Well, it's a bit of both. Prescriptions for family members is a bit of a no-no. I mean, every prescription that you write is an active medical decision that you take responsibility for, and you have to make sure that the benefits outweigh the risks and the indication is absolutely right. Um, and you also need to have consideration of the monitoring and the follow-up that's required too. Plus, doctors are very bad at being objective when it comes to family members, or even worse, at <laughs> being objective about our own health. Doctors make terrible patients. <laughs> My wife doesn't like the diner either, and I. Uh huh. None of them listen. He's sort of babbling. Yeah, he's puking. None of them listen. He's altered. Why didn't you come and get me? I was on my way. I think altered mental status is an absolutely rubbish term to describe this sort of broad disruption in the way that your brain and your mind functions that then manifests with some sort of change in behaviour that people don't really understand. It's usually an acute change. It happens over hours, maybe days, and it ranges from slight confusion to complete disorientation, sleepiness, coma. It could mean delirium, it could mean a head injury, it could mean psychosis, mania, uh, dementia, intoxication. Uh, I have to go back to the diner. What diner? It's where I study. I left my books there. Do other it's a bit of a weird study? place to study. Sometimes. But usually they go to the library because we had those muggings a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I think I read about that. Yeah, it could happen again. So he's not feeling safe. Someone try to mug you? Could have. It's a long way from where I park, and there are a lot of bushes. A slight sense of paranoia, but if these muggings really happen, like then to, that's I'd not like to go soon. completely we'll unreasonable. A scan of your head. Is that that's an X-ray, right? Not bad. They shoot radiation it's through. It's a your... low dose. It's really not enough to do any harm. If someone is presenting to me as a psychiatrist with paranoia, the question that I have is. Actually, could this be somewhat reasonable and proportionate if there's something has genuinely happened? Or could this be a paranoid delusion? Delusions being these fixed, false beliefs held with 100% certainty despite all evidence to the contrary. Delusions by definition are fixed and unshakable and they're a symptom of psychosis. And that's one of the challenges with assessing delusions in the context of psychosis. How can we probe to see the intensity to which this belief is held but without necessarily challenging it? Because if it's fixed, then challenging it, all it's gonna do is frustrate people and break down any sense of therapeutic relationship and trust that you're trying to build with that person. What did something happen? It's just gotten so weird. I'd swear he's wearing the same clothes all the time. And what about his grades? Uh, we went to college together too and he did really well, but he's been cutting classes right and left since September. So poor self-care, reclusive, a drop in your social and your occupational and academic functioning, this sort of vague sense of unease and paranoia that's been building up for some time, all of which would be suggestive of something called a psychotic prodrome, where it's not quite full on psychosis yet, but it's gradually building towards this. But this does suggest somebody with an at-risk mental state that really needs close monitoring and support in case it is now becoming full-blown psychosis. What is going on with you, patient? I was patient? trying to tell you that. Dr. Green just might... had to pull him out of a fight with his friend. Dr. Carter, Abby Lockhart's looking for you. Thanks. He might be schizophrenic. He meets the DSM-4 criteria. Did you page a psych console? I was waiting to present him All to right, you. All right, fine. Page them, get him down here, hand this guy off. You got medical patients waiting. <laughs> Schizophrenia is a medical illness. You wouldn't have that attitude towards somebody with a respiratory illness because you've got cardiac patients waiting. <clears throat> but without going through sort of tick boxy criteria, which is not how psychiatry works, schizophrenia is a chronic psychotic disorder. And we have three main groups of symptoms. We have the positive symptoms, where people experience additional things that they wouldn't normally experience if they had a healthy mind. Delusions, hallucinations, disorganized thinking. We have negative symptoms where people lack certain functions in their brain that they would ordinarily have if they were healthy. So for example, word finding difficulty, quite a blunted affect, difficulties having and uh, developing motivation to do things so people's self care goes down. And then we have cognitive symptoms as well, usually difficulties in sustaining attention and concentration and 
poor short-term and working memories, the ability to adapt and be flexible to uh, new obstacles that life may throw at you, that again means you don't always achieve your goals in the way that you want to achieve them in this sort of planned and socially acceptable way. It's a very all-encompassing condition. Well, that's not good, is it? So a lot is made of rates of violence in people with severe mental illness. Now, the, the, the big takeaway message straight away is violence is a very, very rare event in our society in general. And people with severe mental illness are, of course, much, much more likely to be a risk to themselves than they are to anybody else. But we can't pretend that there is no association between severe and enduring mental illness and rates of violence, because that's not true. We know that People with psychosis are between four to six times more likely to commit a violent offence than people that don't have psychosis. Now, violence is such a rare event that even if you're four to six times more likely, that's still a rare event. And that we know that less than 10% of all violence in our society is attributable to people with severe mental illness like psychosis. So over 90% of violence is still undertaken by people without any mental illness at all. So while people with untreated psychosis are at a higher risk of committing a violent act, they still account for a very small minority of violent acts committed worldwide. The majority of violence in the world is committed by people without severe mental illness, and people with severe mental illness are much more likely to be a risk to themselves than to anybody else. Roland, let me see. Oh, man. Pressure's up to 90 pounds. Why wasn't he in restraints? I don't know. <sighs> with the following, that's next. Paul Shock is 83. Yeah. Are you going to restrain everybody that comes in with psychosis on the off chance that they may or may not be violent at some point in the future in a way that we can't really predict, knowing that violence is still an incredibly rare event? Would you do that to people who are intoxicated, who are much more likely to perpetrate violence than somebody with active psychosis? Sorry, I ran the board with Dr. For Corbett. how long? For 30 seconds? He was up to speed. Hold on, you didn't tell me he was psychotic. I didn't know he was psychotic. Did he present to you? No, I didn't see him. I thought we were waiting for Unless his status changes. Yeah, but someone should tell me that. Should have, could have, would have. We're having a party. Hold on, hold on. Carrie, on. Carrie. We both thought that Lucy and Carter had. They're all covered. worried and all just yeah. taking out their own worry and fear out on each other. Use the residents to keep us informed. It's a very normal reaction. Again, it's primitive fight and flight. And in this case, they're kind of having a scrap with each other, trying to rationalize what's happened. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes happens in a way that you can't predict. So while reflecting on could things have been better, could things have been done differently, yes, is really, really important. Not every adverse outcome is predictable or was preventable. No, I don't believe you. Where's Paul? I want to see him. He's not here. Paul wouldn't hurt anyone. He couldn't. He needs help, Mr. Sabriki. Mm. There's been some kind of mistake. We believe he may have schizophrenia. What? The first psychotic break can happen in your 20s. That's true. You're wrong, okay? No, I... You're wrong. We don't use the term psychotic break, but really what it refers to is this break from reality because psychosis is a very broad term for when your thoughts, your feelings, your perception of what's happening around you, and sometimes even internally as well, isn't in keeping with reality. But with schizophrenia as a chronic psychotic disorder, he's absolutely right. Late teens, early 20s tends to be the most common time in which these symptoms can first manifest. Is there any other place he might go if he needed to feel safe? So he's a little depressed, it doesn't make him crazy. Maybe not. But at the moment, we have to assume he could be a great danger to himself or other people. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense. If he was that dangerous, then why did they leave him alone? because people didn't realize he was that dangerous at the time. I understand. This doesn't make much sense to any of us. But if Paul is in trouble, he needs help. And it's better if we can find him now. It's a very um, empathetic and compassionate sort of scene there for somebody that's perpetrated a very violent act there where, uh, to one of their own as well, where actually it's very easy to lose your compassion and empathy, even if you're a healthcare professional. Paul, do you remember what happened? You can't trick me, I don't know you. The paranoia that's there. I'm not deformed. Temperature's 95. No, Get off of me now. And it's not fair to leave somebody this distressed. 
and there's real risks that come with Dr. Weaver, do you want some sort of physical restraint. So Haldol, Dr. Weaver, you have no right yeah, to maybe not Haloperidol, but something else. Where are you going? So we do have rapid tranquilization protocols for these instances when somebody is posing a risk to themselves or to other people that otherwise can't be de-escalated in any other way. In the UK, in general, we would use a sedating benzodiazepine first, like lorazepam, sometimes sedating antihistamines like promethazine, but you can also use antipsychotics that have a sedating effect, which is probably much more sensible in his case, actually, because he's psychotic. Um, and in that case, you can use intramuscular olanzapine or you can use haloperidol, which can come in intramuscular forms and intravenous forms as well. You okay? I think it's the guy. I mean, it's the guy. It's the psych patient got hit by a car. What is it? Can you just take him? Yeah, okay. Thank we you. just send him up to the OR. BP-124 or 82 as a leader. Probably just some venous oozing. Cleo, can you go up with him? So she's sort of handing over this patient to another doctor. Okay. And I think you can judge that response however you want, but I'd rather have a doctor that is aware that actually they're struggling to maybe be objective with this patient because of what he's done in that department before. Maybe even struggling to find compassion for somebody who's really ill and needs help because of what he's done. So find somebody that's better placed to be able to deal with that than um, sort of carries on despite that. That's, that's insight. To feel is to be human. To feel is not to lose your objectivity, to not be aware of those feelings and those emotions and how they're playing out. That's where things go wrong. When can I go home? I don't know. I don't think you're going home. Oh. Not yet. I need to feed my dog. Paul? We have someone here to see you. Oh. But it kind of brings home the fear that so many patients with mental illness are going through. Paul, what happened? They took my clothes and they took my shoes. Who took your clothes, Paul? Them. Who's, Who's them? them? They had a, a, a blue cake. Is that where you got the knife? And they were going to open me. Paul. Where did you get the knife? I take my organs. So this is something called a delusional perception. We perceive something which can be through any of our senses. In this case, he's seen the blue cake, but we then add onto that a delusional meaning or a delusional interpretation. Again, remember, delusions are fixed, false beliefs held with 100% certainty, despite all evidence to the contrary. So in this case, he's seen the blue cake, and that's how he knows that people are trying to take his internal organs. I've seen that cake, and now all those worries that I had that I couldn't really put my finger on why, now it all makes sense. It's often a delusional perception that transitions somebody from this psychotic prodrome that we talked about with this vague unease that you can't really explain to a full episode of psychosis of, well, now all that makes sense. Now it makes sense why I'm hearing these voices and why I'm feeling paranoid about this and why my thoughts are being controlled in this way, etc., etc. Don't you understand? I have to, I have to protect them. So he's, he's feeling don't under try threat. Don't tell me I don't know because I know. They were trying to take them, and I had, to, I had to stop them. He's really not well, is he? One of the theories that's tried to explain the elevated levels of violence among people with psychosis is called the threat control override hypothesis, which is the tendency to overestimate the likelihood that some outside agent will uh, harm you in some way, and that's where the threat comes from, or control you in some way which then triggers that fight and flight response and increases people's risk of being aggressive in response to that. This has been seen in samples of patients, both in inpatient and community environments. It's not proven by any means, but it's one of the major theories out there. I want you up and walking in 12 hours, okay? Oh, she's dead, isn't she? It's amazing how much you can tell as a doctor. The silence is everything there. Breaking bad news starts, or should start, with a warning shot, really, to let people know something bad is coming, to give them a chance to, to brace themselves. But doctors know how doctors think. The absence of reassurance that she was fine was... And it's basically already told him the answer. The guilt he'll then end up experiencing is only going to compound the wider recovery, really, both psychological recovery and the physical recovery after something like this. 42-year-old 
year-old male, crush injury to the right arm, got it stuck in a conveyor belt, gave him morphine and two liters in the field, a little shocky, 90 over 60. One of their colleagues dies. One of their colleagues nearly dies. Okay. And they have to go back to work. The department goes on. The emergency department never closes. This is why people burn out. Obviously, there's a lot of scenes, particularly the more gory scenes, that I can't show you. You know, algorithm, demonetization, etc. have to work within YouTube's constraints. But I thought that gave us a nice opportunity to talk about what psychosis is, what schizophrenia is, some different psychotic symptoms, particularly this idea of a delusional perception. But as as always, let me know what you thought in the comments below and I will see you soon for another video. Love you, bye.